Welcome everyone to another Jags podcast, episode 41. This is going to be our only episode this week. We like to usually release two, but because the Jags are on a bye this week, thank God, we uh, are only going to be doing one episode. So this is it. We're going to be recapping the game against the Eagles in London. Another loss for the Jags, bringing their overall record to 3-5 and five at the bye. I don't think that's a record that anyone saw coming. Uh, certainly not anybody on this podcast. We have with us tonight Joey, Jason, and myself, and so we're going to get right into it. Before we do, we want to remind everyone that we are on Twitter at Another Jags Pod. We are on Facebook and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast. You can find us on YouTube, just search Another Jags Podcast, or go to our website, anotherjagspodcast.com. All right, boys, let's dive right in. Let me hear your initial thoughts. We're not, not go too deep, but just your initial thoughts of the game on Sunday. I would have thought I'd be more mad. At the game, at parts, I was pretty pretty mad. But afterwards, I mean, I don't know if it was, you know, the awesome viewing at Beaches Chapel and the setup and the spread, the food. Grit the bar. Environment. What's that? The grit bar. The grit bar, absolutely. <laughs> I had more of those today. I got to take some home, so I'm <laughs> super excited about that. But I don't know if it was that or just the fact that I'm just, you know, delirious and crazy, but I really feel okay right now after that game. Really? I, I do. Can you explain why? You're going to have to explain I, that. I can explain why now, or do we want to... Not nah, go for it. You can't tease that. We need to know yeah. that now. I mean, first of all, we've got a bye week coming up, which I think is perfect. It could have been a better bye week for a team than us right now. Um, we're going to be able to sit back. The players can take a little break, be with their families. I think we're going to get some people back healthy. But secondly, the next part of the schedule is way easier than the first part of the schedule. It's not near as intimidating. I think if anybody can go on a run that hasn't or has been on a slide, it's us right now. So I feel pretty good about it overall. I mean, definitely not the Super Bowl contending championship team that we all anticipate at the beginning of the year, but I still think we got a good shot at ending the season respectfully. Okay, well, what does that mean exactly? Because we did all say going into this season that the assumption was we were going to win the division, which meant another home playoff game. Regardless of what any of us said the our, the record would be for the Jags, some of them said 14 and two, others said 10 and six, and everything in between. We all thought that they would at least win the division. Do you still think that's going to happen? I still think it's possible. I mean, that indie game is the biggest game of the Jags last 10 years, which is kind of crazy to say. I didn't think that at the beginning of the season, and of course, Indy's playing better than they used to or were, but. That they have the same record as the Jags yeah, right now. That game's monumental. I mean, we lose that game, and then it's a different different conversation altogether. But to just say the season's over, all that, I mean, it, I don't want to go too in-depth with it, but I still think we're in an okay place. Not where we want to be, not where I want them to be, but it, it's not it's not the end-all at this point. Okay. Jason? Whew. Man. I don't think it's the end of the world in the bye is at a good time, but we are in – panic mode we've got to be we have to go on a serious winning streak if we want to win this division just from the way it's going to go because glad we're on the same page man i'm glad we're getting people back i know we're very injured but man it's like nobody is playing well it's like nobody's playing well like at all like you look at up and down our roster nobody is playing to the level that we thought they would maybe miles jack miles jack is, is playing okay Lambo, Lambo. I don't count him. He's not a real player. He's a I think I still think Ramsey's playing good. Ramsey yeah. is playing pretty good, but he's still not playing to the level that we thought he would in the beginning of the season. He's got one interception. I had nothing but bad stuff to say about Ramsey until that last game. He's shut his mouth and he's bald. He's he's playing well, but it's just no like you look up and down the roster and just no one is doing what we thought they would at all. No one. But I think that that they've got to start doing that at some point though. I mean, we've got a lot of good players, or they're just not who we thought they were. Well, it's possible, but I, I don't see that. I mean, we've got too many good players that they, they've got to start playing like that at some point. It might be too late, but I don't think it is yet. I don't know. I mean, I wish I had shared your optimism, Joey, but, I mean, it's for me, it's kind of one of those fool me once, shame on you, you know, fool me twice, shame on me well, type thing with this team right now. I mean, I, I've been optimistic with them and saying, you know, for for me, you know, this is the – I think the third week in a row I'm saying this is a make-or-break game, you know, and they keep breaking. <laughs> and 
they're going to go up against Indy in a couple weeks at Indy. And, you know, Indy's on the uptick. They, they played better the last couple weeks. The Jags are not. And, you know, we, we're talk, we talk about their health, and rightfully so. But they're not that dinged up on the offensive line. They're missing one starter. We've said that before. One starter. And what does Marone say after the game is they have no confidence in their offensive line. Because one guy is out, and we're not getting him back. He's not coming back after the bye. He's done for the rest of the year. So, yes, they need to get healthy with defensive players. DJ Hayden, you know, A.J. Boye needs to get back. But, I mean, honestly, did you watch that game thinking, man, if we only had A.J. Boye, it would have been a huge difference? I mean, to me it was, and I guess we'll go ahead and say it now, to me it was the, the play calling on, on offense. The offensive play calling was some of the worst play calling I've ever seen in my life. It was ridiculous. If, if they're forced into play calling like that, then we have real, real problems, not just on the field, but in the office as well. Because the coaches, the GMs, the scouts, they saw these players and they signed them or they didn't sign other people. This was the offensive line that they got. And now, eight weeks into the season, they're saying they don't have confidence in the players that they brought in. So either they're not being coached right or they were evaluated poorly because we're only missing one. And when you only rush eight times with your running backs in an entire game, you bring in Carlos Hyde and you give him the ball six times? That's pathetic. That's a joke. So something is going on there, and it's not good. And I don't know if one bye week is going to all of a sudden give the coaches all this confidence in the offensive line. I don't know if having – does Leonard Fournette suddenly give you that much more confidence? in the offensive line where now you go from rushing it eight times in a game where you were in the game the whole time. This game wasn't a blowout. This, was, this is a winnable game in the second half. Does having Leonard Fournette back all of a sudden make you run the ball 20, 25 times now instead of eight? There's a lot to address there. I mean, first of all, if Houston Texans can go from 0-3 to 5-3, and anybody in the league can do it. I mean, that's why they play the games. So it is possible to get hot and go on a run like that. Secondly, I do think the bye week is perfect right now because of what you, exactly what you're saying. Coach staff needs to sit down and decide what they are and what they're going to do with what they've got. Um, yes, I do think Fournette coming back does make a major impact because regardless of whether we're running him or not, the defenses have to take him into account. They've, he scares defenses. That's got to impact their playing. And with the, the running or the lack of running in this game, I mean, Eagles are what, the second best run defense in the league? Third, yeah, maybe? I, I second know. or third. They're definitely top five. Yeah. I think they're towards the top of that top five. Um, we tried to run the ball in the first half a little bit. Didn't work at all. And second half, the passing was working. So I, I'm not necessarily against the play calling in the second half until we got to that, what, ran the ball three times on third and one and then fourth and two. I mean, that, that was garbage. So out of the 31 runs, I think three of them I'd have an issue with. But we moved the ball in the second half. Bortles was playing well. I mean, until Chark dropped that, touchdown pass in the end zone which was just a freaking knife to the sternum man it was working the whole game though i was questioning the play calling because blake had to scramble so many times so either blake is not reading receivers or the play calling is not working with the defense i found myself saying all throughout the game like we're just getting out coached we're getting out coached and and i hate blaming coaches because for the most part I feel like they know what they're doing. And, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of it's Jimmy's and Joe's rather than X's and O's a lot of times. But I think with our team right now, we are just flat out getting out coached. Or you cannot pass the ball 31 straight times. I don't care who your running back is, who your offensive line is, or who your quarterback is. You cannot pass the ball 31 straight times. I'm sorry, it just does not work. You have got to establish some sort of run game. I agree. You have to at least try. You have to throw a couple, no matter if they work or not, just to keep them honest. And I do think that's the coach's fault, but more so I think they got wrapped up in, I think they got wrapped up in it and just lost track of what they were doing. Which You is, cannot do that as a professional I, coach. I agree. You can't get you, wrapped up in the moment. It's I literally agree. your job. But you have to admit that it was way more successful than what they did in the first How half. How do we know? We don't know. They didn't ever, I mean, what's, it, what's his left tackle's name? Freaking. Wells, not Wells. Walker? Josh Walker was getting abused. Absolutely abused on the speed rush. Run the ball inside of the outside rush. Anybody can tell you that. That's how you slow that down. Then the defensive line coach goes, hey, buddy, 
You can't just fly to the outside because they're running the ball inside of you. That's what you do. But no, they just drop back at a shotgun, shotgun hike, shotgun hike. And then Walker's just getting abused on the outside by the speed rush. Parnell was getting beat by the speed rush too. You have to run inside to slow those ends down. You have to throw screens. You have to do things like that. And it's just basic elementary stuff. And I'm sitting there going, we are getting out coached. They're calling plays. That, I mean, we must tip our tendencies so well. Because how many times have the other team called a screen to our like all-out blitz? It's absolutely insane. These running backs should not be getting 35-yard touchdowns. Smallwood should not be getting a 35-yard touchdown on a, on a dump-off. That should not happen. Yeah, it shouldn't. That means your That's, players are out of position, or you called the wrong player. They're not getting off blocks. Dude, our linebackers have played awful the past three games. Miles Jack isn't has not been playing bad. Okay, well, and Ronnie Harrison's been playing that like big safety role, which, and I don't think he's been doing terrible either. Dude, you cannot say that they've played well at all, coaching or not. They have not played well. I mean, they haven't played as well as they did last year, but I wouldn't say they've been bad. I mean, they're probably they're probably middle of the the league. You know, we should be defense. calling pause right now because obviously him not being on the team is creating a dramatic impact on our defense. I think there's so many other factors. Not having A.J. Boye is, is a big deal. I mean, sure. he's one of the best corners in the league. Not having your starting... I mean, we were down to like our sixth and seventh defensive back. You got, yeah, you got Trey Herndon out there starting. You got Quentin Meeks out there. You got getting hurt. Hey, Meeks played pretty well, though, until he got hurt. It's just like, come on. Like, what, we what? talk about the run game, too, though. I mean, we don't have a blocking tight end at all anymore. We've got two guys I've never even heard of. Rumbling, bumbling dude did awesome catching the ball a few times, but... They can't block. We don't have a blocking wide receiver anymore. I mean, our wide receivers are soft as they come. I mean, as soft as they freaking come. If Moncrief doesn't sell out on a, on a trying to catch the ball at least once this season, I mean, we definitely have lots of problems. I'm not discounting that whatsoever. I'm just saying that we're not a dumpster fire quite yet. We beat the Colts. I think everybody's going to have a different view on things. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking. I know you're. it's funny because last week I talked about, I think it was last week, might have been two weeks ago, that the second half of the schedule is much easier. It's and it's funny what difference a week makes because I'm looking at it now and suddenly it's not that easy. I think the one game that you can really pencil in a win is at Buffalo. And if, and know, that's it. it. It's gonna to be me. cold up there. Are you sure about that? Well, I know. You, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, seriously. But I I don't know. You, none of these are gimmies. You know. I, again, Indy is is starting to put things together. You got the Steelers here on a Sunday night. I'm sure they would love to enact some revenge from last year. And they're on the rise as well. I mean, they're playing some good football yeah. now. We now. Then we have a home game against the Colts. Then at Tennessee on a Thursday night. That does not favor the road teams typically. I don't know. It's just, it's not all of a sudden like, well, we're going to be, we're, you know, we, like you said, you said yourself, Joey, we have a lot of areas of concern. And that's one reason why I'm concerned. Because it's not just, you can't just pinpoint one thing. You know, Bortles actually didn't play that bad on Sunday. He had one of his better games, especially considering the fact that they asked him to throw it 31 times in a row without any run game whatsoever, with right wide receivers dropping the ball left and right. He actually didn't play that bad. So there's a whole list of things. We actually have a, a Twitter question. Um, Jason, you want to read that one that kind of addresses all of this as well? Yep, this is from Brent Papineau, and he's at Brent Papineau. This was a great question, by the way. Shout out to you, Brent, for giving us a good one. What is the problem with the Jags? One, injuries? Two, coaching. Three, players not stepping up no matter what. He says it's about 40-40-20 across that board. Hmm. I mean, I was going to say all of the above before you busted out the percentages there. Yeah, I know. I mean, it that's really, what I'm saying. That was a good. It's a great question, and it, it really is. I mean, that's where we're at. And unfortunately, I mean, I don't have an answer for it, and I don't think the coaches have an answer for it. I don't think anybody has an answer for it. I mean, to me, play calling, all that aside, the players play the game. They're all professionals out there. They're all making a boatload of money. We've got some good players. It's up to them, man. I mean, that that's the bottom line. But it's a very strategic game. And when your defensive coordinator is calling an eight-man blitz and the offensive coordinator is from the other team is calling a screen, that's getting out coached. When you fail to adjust in the second half to what the other team is doing, that's on the coaches. That's okay. failing to adjust. Right. Like at some point... The coaches have to put their players in the best position to win, and it just seems like they're doing the same thing over and over again, butting their head against the wall, and you have to do something different. No, I, I agree. That's definitely an important part of the game. But also, Cole not dropping it, Cole not fumbling it, and Chark not dropping the touchdown in the end zone, that has more of a dramatic impact on the game. I mean, dude, you gotta, 
you got to be able to catch the ball. You got to hold on to the ball. Yeah. You got to do your job. You've got to win your battle, whatever that is, regardless of the play call. You've got to win your battle. But I mean, Carson Wentz had some overthrows. He threw a bad pick to Jalen Ramsey. They didn't really run the ball that well until the second half. So it's not like the other team is doing a perfect. Their players are playing perfect, too. That's part of the game. You're going to get this stuff. And, you know, it just hurts more because it's our team. But every team across the board is having little issues here and there. And you have to be able to overcome those if you're going to win. Yeah, but every other team also has an Alshon Jeffries or an Ertz on their team to where they're going to make big plays. Well, and that that is a, is a good point because that talks to David Caldwell. I mean, these are the players that this team thought could go on a Super Bowl run. These players. They didn't go out in the, in the offseason and make a splash signing. They didn't sniff at Des Bryant. They didn't do any of those things. They didn't re-sign Allen Robinson. So this is, these are the guys that we think can win it, and they're not. So there, there is concern, not just with the injuries, not just with the coaching, not just with the players doing their job, but with the front office as well. I mean, it's hard to argue eventually that. You, have to start, you have to start pointing at Dave Caldwell. You, you have to. Because they, they went on this run last year and they brought everybody back and said, hey, let's do it again. Let's not upgrade like so many other teams did. You didn't see Minnesota doing that. You know, you didn't even see the Saints doing that. They went out and got Bridgewater with Drew Brees on the team. And traded all the draft picks up for a, to move up for a D end. Yes, exactly. I mean, you can't stand pat in this league and expect everybody else to as well. You have to continue to advance, and they did not do that this offseason. Well, they did. Aside from Norwell. Well, which, again, he's turned out, I mean, that just makes Caldwell look even worse because he's supposed to be this, like, unbelievable, like, just player, the best in the world. And really, dude, he's done jack this year. That's not fair, though. Dude, that's completely fair. He's, he's the not... highest paid player in his position in the league. Compared to that, he's done jack. But he's consistently been one of the top three offensive linemen on our team every week. I think he's done. Jack. We have, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that, Parnell spend that fifty million. Parnell, on else. Can, and Walker have been abysmal, abysmal. Like Linder and Norwell are like holding down the fort every single week. That's two on four every. I mean, these guys are are not. I mean, Can looked good in the preseason in the first couple games, but he has dropped off hard. So you're saying without Norwell and his hands to the face penalties, we'd be worse off. You just remember them because <laughs> when they're penalties and when a, a offensive lineman gets beat once. You remember that, but you got to take into context every other snap that he wasn't mentioned. He was doing his job. I just remember him because we don't run the ball ever anymore, and he's supposed to be the guy that helps us run the ball. Well, so I mean, maybe that's back to the coaching. But as a as a average casual, well, not casual fan, but average fan, not football IQ up to the rafters. To me, with him there, we should be able to run the ball better, and we run the ball way worse or way less often. So He hasn't been bad, though. He hasn't okay. been as bad as you think. All right. And especially considering how bad the other people have been, is all I'm saying. Like, We should have upgraded our right tackle. Like Anyone could have told you that, that Parnell is, is getting aged out of the game. Is doing nothing. Can is consistently missing blocks. We have no blocking tight end. I mean, come, this was all stuff we talked about in our preseason episodes. Like, well... We hope our guys can hold up like they did last year, but and here we are with some injuries and then on top of that, and we're bottom of the league. One thing we haven't addressed, which I keep meaning to bring up, I don't, I'm not sure there's a Twitter question for this or not, I hope not, but how much of it do you think is, this would be my Twitter question, I guess, how much of it do you think it is the league changing from a throwing league and us trying to be a gritty power run team? How big of a mistake? Who's was that? trying to be a gritty power running yeah. team? Well, I mean, show that's me how we, the team that's doing that because it's not the Jaguars. Well, that's how we built our team, man. You know what I mean? I mean, we're not a. Did we though? We did. We got that's rid of Mer- we got rid of Mercedes Lewis. We Norwell is, is actually a a pass blocking lineman. He's a lot better at pass blocking than he is run blocking. We assigned Bortles, who is a gunslinger compared to a, like a smart surgical passer. So where where is our gritty running commitment? So I guess we're not set up to, for anything. We're right? not. Yeah. All right, perfect. I, don't, I mean, just we because, have no identity. Just, <laughs> we have just, no, because, no identity. Just because identity. Marone said that he wants to be. And re- remember, Marone, if we could not pass the ball at all, that would be great. <laughs> what, 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 just because he said that doesn't mean it's what it is. I mean, this the play speaks for itself. Well, that really sucks, man. Thanks for depressing the hell out of me. Well, I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to be realistic here. I mean, I, I'm frustrated like all the other Jaguar fans. I mean, because we have talent all across the roster. I mean, we are maxed out on a salary cap. It's not like we have a bunch of money in reserves that we can save to bring in big splashes this offseason. We're going to have to cut some good people this year to 
improve our team, and we're we're doing nothing. Let me ask you this. Speaking of that, because that's a good point, the trade deadline is tomorrow. I mean, do we see any movement with the Jags? Maybe because if they start trading guys now, that 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 says a lot. That says the season's over. But in an effort to save cap space for this off season, I think we're past that. I think, I don't mean. I mean, who would we trade realistically? Yeah, who, who's I mean, I mean, just if, get, if, I think if we're making any movement, it's to try to improve. I don't think we go into tank mode. Who? No one's going to trade anything for Campbell. No yeah. one's going to trade anything for Malik. We're not going to trade in Gakwe. We're not getting rid of Darius. Same deal. I mean, we're not. I mean, Darius was our best player. He's the only guy that had the he had the strip sack. I don't. Know, I think. I'm not. I'm not saying they will at all. I I would be shocked if they did. But I think you could move Campbell and Malik Jackson. Both are playing well. They they got a lot of money, but remember, teams, most teams that want to make a run, it's mid season. You know, they might need that extra little push. I think it's I think it's possible. I'm not saying it'll happen, but I think there are guys that they could move. I, I think that those guys would be movable and other teams might want them, but I think if you move that leadership from the locker room, the everything falls apart. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like if yeah, they if they were to do that, they're they're throwing in the towel. I think the only guy you could get rid of is Fowler. Yeah, I do too. I mean I, and I just I mean I don't realistically seeing you get more than a third round pick from anybody for Campbell. I mean, is that worth it? I mean, I don't think so, no. but no, I mean, it's just teams. I mean, who do you go after? I mean, nobody's given up a, I mean, if you're receiver. draft picks, yeah, you're getting draft yeah. picks at that yeah. point, but no, I don't think they do that because they're not mathematically eliminated. I think if, you know, if they were just had one win, maybe we'd see that, but yeah. do we trade for a wide receiver? Do we trade for a left tackle? I mean, not a lot out there, but that would be the only, movement i would see i think jokel's available right come on now i have no response to that go there the, <laughs> thing, right. the thing is though they're there this is a three and five team and i know we're not mathematically eliminated i know we could go on a run but this is this to me just seems like a bad three and five you know what i mean like the five losses have been blowouts or i mean nine to six against tennessee and then this game against the eagles where I don't know. It just, I mean, I jokingly said to Joey, but not really after they got down 10 to six in the, was it first quarter, second quarter? I was like, yeah. well, ball game. Yeah. You know, and sure enough, it's it just, they just seem really broken. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's, I'm not sure where you go to fix it. That's the one thing is that they've got no mojo whatsoever. There's no momentum. There's that, no, that's a good like, way to put it. There's no cohesiveness. It, I mean, it's like I said, you've got a bunch of good players, but there's no good team at all. I mean, it's like, hey, this guy's good, this guy's good, but they don't play together. It doesn't seem like they're playing for each other for the most part anymore. I mean, that that that's the thing that scares me more than injuries or anything is they're, they're kind of almost against each other at this point, it seems like. I'd like to see how this team looks when Fournette and DJ Hayden get back because we should have won that game against the Eagles. Yeah, absolutely. We should have won out. that game. And I feel like if we had a couple pieces, we would have won that game. So I'd like, I want to see what we look like after the bye. I'm willing to give them a couple more weeks. And I think the front office is too. So that's why I think you won't see any trades. Because it's not like 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 we're all saying, we have good talent on this team. We just gotta put it all together. Yeah, I'm definitely starting to think Hayden was way more important to any of our success in the first part of the season than we realized. Yeah. I mean, dang man, we're tanking because of a big toe. I mean, I, I like Fernand and all. I think he's a, a great running back, but I just don't think with Yeldon and now Carlos Hyde back there that he would have made all that much. Like, would we really have won that game? I mean, come on. You got Yellen's good. He's had a good year. Carlos Hyde is a good running back. Are they as good as Fournette? No, but they are still serviceable. And they didn't even give him a chance. They didn't even give him a chance in the second half. Second and one, pass. Third and one, pass. Fourth and one, pass. They converted on that one. Exact same scenario. The next, the next set of downs. Like they said it might have been second and two. Pass. Third and two. Pass. Fourth and two. Pass. And they don't convert. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, you're, you're are you kidding me? yelling at the screen in church. Yeah. In, so in, in, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> in, in both of those scenarios, I, I'm assuming they would have said, well, let's give it a Fernet. You, you got to be able to do that with Yeldon. And, you would think so, man. I mean, you, it's just it's, it's I mean, I, baffling. I, me. do, I do agree with Jason. I think. Fournette adds a different dynamic to the game than any other running back can for the most part. And I think he would have made a difference. But my concern now is, I mean, there's been multiple reports that he's cleared. Like, the doctor said he's fine to play, and he's still not playing. Which, I mean, dude, come on. Yeah. I mean, that 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 worries me as well. 
I mean, how hard are you going to go when you go back? I mean, how afraid are you? How much do you care about your career versus the team that's paying you? I mean, there's a lot of question marks there that even if he does come back, he might not be the same guy, and that's intentional. It certainly sounds like the front office, the coaching staff, whatever you want to call it, they're kind of over it with him right now. And I, no one's really saying anything specific about it, whether it's he just doesn't want to play or he's just not being mature about his rehab. or yeah, I don't know. I'm just speculating here. But there's definitely more to all this than just a hamstring. For sure. Well, players have already come out and said, without saying it, that he wasn't mature about his preparation for the season, taking care of his body, what he was supposed to do. I mean, it, that's part of the reason like an, an injury like that happens. And there's definitely been murmurs about that. So I, I think he's immature. I mean, I would have been at that age as well. Give me all that money. And I've been a beast my entire career without really having to do that. But you're a pro now. You've got to. So, I mean, I think that's a learning experience for him. Hopefully he takes it serious. Another Twitter question? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> all right. This one is from... Hmm, which one do I like the most? I like this one the most. I'm going to go to it. This is from Spooky King, and he's at the Noah Bennett. And he says, thoughts on hiring Todd Haley and firing Hackett? I get where he's coming from, but, I mean, what is Todd Haley going to do with this offense? Yeah, I don't think that's the answer either. Not yet. I like Todd Haley. I like your answer, not yet, but I like Todd Haley. I've been a Todd Haley. Maybe because he went to UNF. He was a golf coach at UNF. Maybe that's why. But, uh... I like Todd Haley. He did a lot with the Steelers. I'm just not a fan of mid-season coaching changes unless it's just like they're just god-awful. And you could argue that to some extent off and on, but I think there's a lot more factors going into it you have to take into account than just bad play calling. I don't know how he would work with Marone, too. I mean, Haley's been known to kind of be a rogue coach. Um, reports came out today that basically he didn't listen to a word of what Hugh Jackson said, and maybe that's just because <laughs> he thought Hugh Jackson was an idiot and he wasn't going to. But <laughs> I think we can all agree there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but it got him fired too. You know, it, he, both of them are out of a job. So uh, I don't know. It could it could be a little tumultuous have bringing him in now. Would you have to bring him in as like a coordinator, or could you bring him in as another position? Uh, I think if he's going to go anywhere, it's going to be his coordinator. I mean, he's been fired now twice and. Under a year. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's a good question. I, mean, I could see that maybe, you know, and then if it doesn't work out, you got him on the on the team. I mean, if we are if we want to go, like, really talk coaches, I have some ideas, but I don't know if it's really even that, that dire of a, of a situation interested. yet. Uh, that means everybody would be interested, I think. I mean, I would – if if this season tanks and we don't, we don't finish 500, if we finish 7-9 and nine or anything worse, I mean, this is a team that – you got a lot of money invested in it. You got a lot of players. And to me, that goes all to the coaching. And so, I mean, I hate to overreact here. And I love Marone. But you have to seriously look at the coaching and say, we may need to start over. And if it was me, I would bring in uh, Eric Bieniemy. I think is his name, the offensive coordinator from the Chiefs. Hmm. Immediately. Bring him in be, and get hire an offensive minded head coach. And I know Marone, I guess, is technically on the offensive side of the ball because he was an offensive lineman. But I mean, someone that you know can really call <laughs> plays in this league yeah. because the league is not set up to be a defensive league anymore. They they want you scoring points. Defenses can't play defenses. Can't play defense. So bring in an offensive minded younger coach and uh, see what he can do. But I mean, when when you're starting to do that, then you're really you know, you're talking about a rebuild, ultimately. Yeah. Well, I think Hugh Lynch's question may be a good follow-up for you then. Okay. He says that we need a mobile quarterback that can scramble because of how bad our offensive line is. He said it would have to be a cheap quarterback, and we don't want to give up a lot, so he wants to know our thoughts on RG3 from the Ravens. No, I think that's a terrible yeah, idea. RG3. We have a, we have a <laughs> scramb scrambling yeah, I mean, quarterback. I think Blake's as mobile as he needs to be. And RG3, I mean, that, that guy had a year, and his, his time's over. I mean, but that's a great point because uh, James, on your point, yeah, I mean, bringing in a coach like that might be great, but what coach is going to want to come with my boy Bortles as the quarterback? Well, and that's what I—that's what I mean. If you brought in a new head coach, it would be a rebuild because new head coaches want their own quarterback. Uh, so listen, this this could get bad real quick. You know, Joey, you're you're giving it through the Colts game, and if we lose, then then you're. I, yeah. It sounds at like that, then that you're point, ready to jump ship. We'll start talking about mock drafts. Yeah. But that's one game away from that. You know, yeah. we're, we're one game away from, from things really falling apart quick. And so I'm just saying, with, with 
everything going against us that there are. Offensive line can't do anything. Wide receivers can't catch the ball. Blake is Blake. Fournette seems healthy, doesn't want to play, whatever. We don't know all about that. I mean, coaching, the play calling has been awful. That's that's hard to fix. And we, so we have two tight ends I still can't name. Right. I mean, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> So I'm just saying, like, this, you know, I I hate talking about the offseason when it's not even November, but if we're being realistic, that's kind of where my brain's going right now, which sucks. I don't, I don't, I'm not ready to go there yet. I'm not. <laughs> this is such a weird year with injuries. I mean, I've never seen a team so injured ever. I mean, I'm trying to think back. I mean, I think there was a Gator, Florida Gators team like two years ago that, was like stupid injured as well. It was like last year. Yeah, they had yeah. twenty two players yeah. at one point. Yeah. And but this is like something you don't see very often. I mean, this is we did when we did our preview shows with all the positions, we were talking about this guy is like serviceable depth. And now they're like starters all across the board. Everywhere. I mean, Ronnie Harrison, Quentin Meeks, I mean, Leon Jacobs only played four snaps. I mean, these are, I mean, we, you know, like Rashad Green might be a starting Rashad wide receiver. Rashad Green, soon. are you kidding me? Is starting? Like, it's, I don't know. I mean, well, let me ask you this, okay? Of the five losses to Tennessee, they lost nine to six. Kansas City Chiefs, they lost 30 to 14, I think, or 40 to seven. I don't know. Then the Cowboys was 40 to seven. Texans, 20 to seven. And now the Eagles, 24 18. Of those five losses, how many can you attribute to injuries? Tit- Titans, Eagles, uh, all of them. No. no, all of them. Titans and Eagles. If we'd had Fournette, or if we'd had Fournette, makes the it, Titans yeah. game. We weren't that. We no. weren't that unhealthy. No, but Fournette think- makes a huge difference. Fournette makes a huge difference. I mean, you got to think. I mean, he to me, he's on the level of an Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Todd Gurley. I mean, he's not just some like random dude back there. I mean, he is. He was a top draft pick. And he makes a huge difference when he's in the game. He busts off these long runs. He hits top speeds of like 25 miles an hour. He helps you in the passing game. He helps you in the blocking game. He brings defenders into the box. I mean, it's... He affects the other team's He is. I mean, he's a, it's a big deal that he's hurt. And he's been hurt all year. Marquise Lee was our number one wide receiver. Absolutely number one. You could look in the preseason, last season, when Blake drops back, he's looking at Marquise Lee at the snap. He yep. was he was our third down magic genie. On third down, we would go to Marquise Lee, and he would extend the drives over and over again. And not just that. I mean, you talk about edge rushing without Lee and without a tight end now. I mean, that's huge. ASJ, gone. Austin Zimmerman has not played all year. We were counting on him to be our receiving tight end. We were counting on him to be that playmaker, that Blake safety net in the middle of the field. I mean, this. I think injuries have have plagued us, and the coaches have tried to like overcompensate, but it's just it's it's been bad. And hopefully, we get them back. I think if we go back to the beginning of the like our calls and everything, I might have said something about that injuries and all. So it's your fault. You jinxed us. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think the the Titans game. I think they definitely would have won had Fournette been in that game. But I think they should have won anyway. It's a field goal game. The Chiefs and the Cowboys. I'm sorry. I don't. I, I just don't think yeah, Fournette being in that is, is going to. What about Marquise Lee though? We just got stomped there. No, you mean both of them? Yeah. The thing with Lee though, we knew before the season started. It was it was a preseason injury, and again, yeah, he, he. I agree with everything you just said. He is. A, he was a, our number one wide receiver, and and would have made a big difference. But we've had eight weeks. Well, of the I'd, regular season to adjust with I'd him, love and they have not. And go off on a tangent here, it kind of fits in. Why in the world do we not throw to D.D. Westbrook until the second half or end of the game? <laughs> Talk about a go-to receiver. Every time we throw to him, something happens. He catches the ball. He busts off a run. Scores a touchdown. Can you please answer me that? I mean, I don't have to tell you, man. I feel like Blake drops back, reads one target, and then ducks his head and runs or gets sacked. All right. That's what it seems like to me. I, I mean, it's time to read any other. The, I've well, coaches, why can't he be his first call? I mean, first read. If I was coming out of the bye, I, I would start Didi and Chark. Yeah. That, those would be my two starting Moncrief's receivers. has been playing good, though. Oh, He's man. Been playing Moncrief's, okay. Mon- Moncrief has had plenty of opportunity. He had a good point. game last week. He's had plenty of opportunity. I think anybody he had that like gets eight his, catches last but week. But he gets so many consistent looks every game. If Didi got that, I guarantee you'd have better numbers right now. I mean, Chark's the one that dropped the ball in the end zone. I agree. 
Keelan Cole is the one that's been dropping the ball. I'm talking about Didi. Mm-hmm. Keelan needs to just, you know. Keelan might not be on the team much longer. No, nah, seriously. I'm, I'm done with him. I, I hate to say that because it was a good good backstory. It, you know, I love those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe he can do American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> Maybe so. He's they're all, they're training. all about backstories. He's, he's a little in light. That could work. That's true. He probably could. I actually have a Twitter question that, that, that would have been mine had I been following us and asked a question. The London situation with the four guy, the four players in the secondary who ran up a bill of sixty four thousand dollars and decided not to pay. To me, the fact that they didn't pay isn't really that big of a deal. I really think it was probably a miscommunication. They thought it was going to be comped. It wasn't. Whatever. Or what? Let me ask you this: What does it say about the players and where the team's at that you got guys partying until four o'clock in the morning? You know, when they're about to play a game that is a huge game. Does that concern you at all? Or is this just boys will be boys, it's pro athletes, they're going to do whatever they can, go, go do that one night and be ready for the game and it's no big deal at all? Well, it actually was two nights, it was Friday night. Right. So we found that out. Um, and Baselli was going through today the actual like schedule for a Saturday there and he said they've got a meeting in the morning and then like nothing to do all day. So they could have slept all day. So I mean that, you know, their quality of their play, I don't think that really affected it. What concerned me though is like if you're a win- if you're the Rams, by all means, man, go to the go to the club. But if you're the Jags who are on the downward slide, it's just a bad look. It's a bad decision. It really doesn't show me that your head's where it should be. Your head should be maximum rest. Your head should be making yourself and your team look as good as possible because you're sucking right now. So no, I thought it was a horrible call. Yeah, I agree. I mean, these everybody that was in that group besides Barry Church is kind of really still trying to establish himself in the NFL. It's not like they're proved it, made all kind of money. You know, regardless of what happens with this season, they're going to go on and be players somewhere. They, it, it really is a bad look. Like, you got to be more professional than that. I mean, you have an organization that's investing millions of dollars into you and fans that are paying their hard-earned money to go watch you week in and week out. I don't go out before I have to go to work because I'm responsible to my job. So I expect the same thing out of you. So yeah, you're right. It is a bad look because if you're playing really bad and you're doing that stuff, now we can draw a correlation. So I do hold these guys to a higher standard and you should not be. I don't care about the time difference. I don't care but they thought it was going to be comped. None of that matters. You're a professional. You need to act like one. It also kind of goes back to the coaching as well. I mean, why in the world would you not have a curfew on those guys? I mean, set it at 12, set it at 1, whatever. but Throw a curfew out there. I mean, the Eagles had a curfew. 11 o'clock. Yeah. I did, I did hear a hilarious meme on that. I'm not sure if you guys saw it today or not. It said that uh, Chodkan can't move the team to London if the players aren't allowed back in the country. W- <laughs> way to go, Jags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, maybe they were, yeah, they were looking out for us a yeah, little bit Yeah, they're just there. geniuses. I think that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a good look. It was not encouraging at all you know when you're getting those alerts saturday night about what's going on over there um there's just nothing about this season so far that has really been that promising and this is just another piece of that puzzle i mean it's been really hard to find besides the new england game you know it's i don't know it's been seems like one thing after another this could just be one of those seasons you know but the question is if it is then what happens next year i mean that that's a it's a big time question. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a little early for that, but man, yeah, that. Oof. I was racking my brain trying to think of like w- what team has had like one of those seasons and then like bounced back in the next year. And, like, not a lot came to mind. Like maybe the Falcons. I mean, they've had a down year and then they've come back and been okay. Or maybe the Packers. But outside of that, you don't see teams typically yo-yo with wins and losses mm-hmm. from season to season. Oh well, there's like the 2000 Jags. Oh, wait, right. that didn't yeah. work out. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, you know, you look across the board, it just doesn't usually seem to work like that. So, I am scared it is one of those seasons because it's starting to look like it now. Because, uh, I mean, we're in week, week what? We're in week nine? Week nine, yeah. We're in we're week nine. through the season. Oh, it's not like we're, <laughs> I mean, we're in week nine. And, and so, we don't play again until week 10. So, it's... It's it's do or die time now. Like we gotta we gotta go. We gotta get going. And that's on the coaches, that's on the team leaders, it's on the players, that's on everybody. But figure it out. Figure your crap out. Yeah. I mean, I think if they had gone into this game against the Eagles and 
have been back and forth or whatever, and and the Eagles kick a 55-yard field goal to win it. But, you know, we had made catches and had been a balanced offensive attack. I'm like, okay, you know, it was a tough loss, but whatever. But it didn't have that feel at all. It did not have that feel at all. And that's what worries me. It's just we cannot get over the hump. And it's getting later and later and later in the season. We have eight games left. And Houston doesn't look like they're slowing down. Indy's on the uptick. I'm not worried about them in terms of division. Really, Tennessee either uh, too much. But there's only so much sand in the hourglass. Uh, We'll see what happens. I mean, you got to figure, though, like Deshaun Watson's going to get hurt at some point, right? I mean, he's got like a collapsed (laughs) lung. He's got a bionic leg, I think. I mean, it's a good bet. They can happen to other teams as well. They can. uh, You know, so just pray for that. (laughs) (laughs) Any other Twitter questions? Yeah, this one's fresh. Came in 10 minutes ago. Ooh, hot. This is from Mike Yaziggy. And he says, any potential trade targets? Well, we just kind of talked about that a little (laughs) bit. Um, And I would say, Mike, I would say no. I don't think it happens. No, me either. No, I mean, if they were two and six, maybe. One and seven, certainly, but not yet. I mean, trade deadline's going to come and go. I think the trade deadline in the NFL comes too quick. Yeah, it's way too early in the season. It is. They they need to do it later on when, when teams are more desperate. How about a week? Seventh round pick for Taysom Hill. Anybody? I don't know. Taysom Hill is uh, pretty valuable for the Saints. That's the they yeah, use the Saints it. Guy. I know. I know. All right. This question we kind of already answered this, but you know we'll address it. This is from Josh Hampton. And he's at the Josh Hampton. He says, "Why didn't Carlos Hyde make a difference? I know he only got nine touches, but come on. Actually, he only got six touches. So I think there's your answer right there. Is he didn't have he didn't have a chance to. I was baffled. Like. Guy at work asked like what I thought Hyde was going to do for the team before the game, and I said he's getting thirty carries, man. He's going to be our workhorse. We're going to ride him, you know, into the ground, and he's going to do a good job because he's a good back. I mean, he's got like what twenty six touchdowns in five seasons on a couple really bad teams. Again, I get why they kind of did it, but I kind of don't either. I mean, I, he's a good a good back. You got to see what he's got. All right, this one's from Patrick Jackson, our boy from the UK. Did we confirm that? Oh, yeah. He okay. said he lives a couple miles north of... Did he go to the game? Do we know? I don't know. Patrick, let us know if he went to the game. Let us know, Patrick. But he says, and this is a pretty good question, do you think having an unexpectedly good receivers on a previous roster made our recruitment complacent? They could easily do that again when they let Hearns and Robinson go. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I bought into that. I mean, I thought that with the way they played last season... Um, this being a second or third year for some of them, and then making continue to make that leap, I definitely thought that it was the right call. Save money on the wide receiver position, spend it elsewhere. Um, but yeah, that's it was a just tremendous flop of a decision because those guys don't have it. Well, and also to go back to Jason's point, Marquise Lee going down was huge. Yeah, that's I think true. I think that really was the Lee was the linchpin of that receiving core and him going down it was like oh man who's going to who's going to step it up and and no one has unfortunately Cole has been the biggest letdown to me i mean we all thought with his performance last year and his game against New England this year that the sky was the limit for this guy and i don't know what has happened to him but he's alligator arming catches he's dropping ones that hit his hands he's fumbling when the guy's barely tackling him i mean i hate seeing it Especially, you know, like Joey, you said, with a guy like a backstory like that, you know, undrafted free agent signs with a team, makes the team, and um, for whatever reason, he's just not the same player anymore. But I really think you can you can go back to Marquis Lee getting hurt in the preseason, and that's where it all crumbled for these wide receivers. If yep. he's if he's on the team, he's taking the pressure off all of them. They can kind of be a little more free, but he's not there, and the pressure is on them, and they're not they're not responding. Yeah, that was definitely way bigger than I anticipated it to be. Big time. I mean, he's your guy that led the team in receptions the year before. I mean, it's it's a big deal. Yeah. So, I mean, take, take that off the team and, you know, you would hope you'd lean on your run game more, but here we are throwing 31 straight times in the fourth quarter. I don't so. know. If we're, if we're talking about biggest flops over receiver, though, I still think Chark's there. I mean, he's yeah, a high draft. really, pick. like, uh, you Dude, know. Catch the ball. We're not asking you to do anything. But he hasn't the been bad, though. And he's a rookie. He's had some major drops. I mean, he's been fantastic on special teams. That's the only thing that's kind of like saving grace in my mind. But did you, you got to catch the ball. Yeah, you do. You got to catch that touchdown pass. I mean, that was huge. That was huge. Yeah. 
But so was the, so was the Cole fumble. I mean, that yeah. was that was on a scoring drive, and then Eagles get the ball and score their first touchdown of the game on that turnover. So I mean, you, we listen. We could we could spend all night pointing fingers at everybody, and that's that's what concerns me most. We'd all be right. <laughs> I yeah. said to James during the game, I was like, man, Wentz just throws such a pretty football. I mean, you watch him throw the ball, and you're like. Kind of, kind of tear up a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah, he does. Dang. What is that? That's a spiral. Oh, that, that's it's... a spiral right to where nobody can catch him. He throws like receiver. on the run. Yeah. <laughs> really, for me, the first offensive play of the game, number one offensive play of the game, Bortles fumbles the snap and has to fall on it. <laughs> yeah, it's just right. like, are you kidding me? Like, this is what we are. It's okay. the most important part of the game, the beginning, the scripted first drive of the game. You have you've been practicing this set of plays over and over and over again. And you cannot get the center quarterback exchange right on the first play of the game. Plus he's got like really big hands. It's supposed to be easy for him to do that, right? It just it just sums it up for me. Yeah, I mean I, I was checking my phone Sunday morning and saw all that stuff about the nightclub and I like I wasn't surprised, which kind of sets the tone for me, I guess. Like it's just one thing after another, like James said. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, sounds about right. Major game, London. Why not go out and get arrested at most? Perfect. We are Jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> if I call you guys at like uh, 4 a.m. for not I, paying I a bar. I don't have grand later <laughs> <on>. well, <laughs> it, it, it We all like come $64, pick me up. Dollars, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then will, you, then will you call my boss and tell him that I'll be a little late? Sure, if I you got your mind. back, man. Yeah, I, I got it. That. As long as it's under hundred dollars, <laughs> I'm your man. All right, I think that's it. I mean, what else is there to say? What can you say? We feel your frustration. Mm, we have it too. We have questions. We all have questions. I think it's going to be a long couple weeks because it's just, it was such a head scratching loss. I mean, so head scratching across the board. But all we can hope is that in two weeks, Fernet is healthy. DJ Hayden's healthy. We get some guys back and they respond. Even if they don't, even if they don't make the playoffs, which we don't want to write that out. They're they're still in it. But even if they don't, if they just respond and play better and show some heart, that that'll be a lot going into the off season. But if they continue on this way, man, who knows what's to come after that? I will say this: if we can't scheme for the Colts in a two week time frame. I'm gonna have a whole list of coaches and general managers to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's for sure. That's a good point. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for episode 41. We will be coming back next week with episode 42, which will be our preview episode against the Colts. And uh, we'll see where we're at. Hopefully, we'll have some injury updates for you by then as well. And uh, hopefully, we'll be in a better mood too. I think we will. We need a buy too. I think we need, we we need all we, yeah. the fans, we need a yeah. buy. We do. Yeah. I'm actually kind of relieved that we, we have a buy this week. You know, it'll be nice to. Just not be able to, have to worry about it and be Guaranteed spend my Sunday afternoon to cry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, that does it for us. Thanks for listening. Uh, make sure if you have any other questions to reach out to us on Twitter at Another Jags Pod or Facebook and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Spread the word. As always, go Jags.